Are you looking to build a multi-million dollar real estate investing portfolio, but there's one major thing holding you back? You don't have any money or you don't have the time? Well, do not fear, I have a solution for you. In this video, I'll break down the step-by-step -step process on how you can build a real estate portfolio using joint venture partnerships. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share how much you can expect to profit in a joint venture partnership. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. For those who are not familiar with a joint venture partnership, a JV as it's commonly referred to, is when two parties come together for the benefit of owning real estate. The two parties usually bring different skills to the transaction. A very typical structure of a joint venture agreement in real estate investing is one party is what we call the working partner, and the other party is called the money partner. The working partner is usually someone who has expertise and is willing to put in time to the transaction in exchange for not putting in a lot of their own money. The money partner is more of a passive role where they contribute dollars, but they don't contribute a lot of time. As you can see, there are benefits to both parties in a joint venture partnership. So here's the six step process you can follow to joint venture in real estate. Step one, define what you need in a partner. There are all kinds of ways to joint venture in real estate and no two partnerships are the same. One of the more common scenarios is investing investors who want to get into real estate but don't have a lot of cash. If this is you, you are looking for OPM, other people's money. If you have money but perhaps you don't have a lot of time to dedicate to your real estate investing portfolio, you want to use OPT, other people's time. Or you may have money and time but you can't qualify for financing. In this case, you may need OPC, other people's credit. Someone who has the ability to qualify for financing or credit, the first step is to figure out what's holding you back from achieving your real estate investing goals and search that out in a partner. Step two, find your partner. I'll be honest with you and save you a lot of time. Your highest chance of finding a joint venture partner is going to be your inner circle, people that already know you, like you, and trust you. These are going to be your friends and your family. Beyond your inner circle is when things get a little more challenging because you lose the element of people knowing, liking, and trusting you. But that's okay, this can be built up over time. This is why it's important to be a part of various real estate investing networks and why it's important that people understand what you do. If no one knows what you do and you're not a part of any real estate investing clubs or networks, it's going to be hard for you to find joint venture partners. The biggest piece of advice I can give you here is your success rate with finding joint venture partners will increase dramatically if they are coming to you versus you going to them. All the more reason to focus on building a name for yourself, a reputation for success in real estate investing, and letting everyone know that you are open to partnerships. On that note, if you're interested in partnering with me on a transaction, check out my development company, Ready Developments. We have some incredible partnership opportunities coming up. Now you must be an accredited investor to partner with us on a deal. If you're not sure what an accredited investor is, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information. Step three, sign a letter of intent. This is a basic document outlining the roles and responsibilities of each partner and the parameters of the transaction. This is not a legal document and it's not binding, but it is a good first step to understand the basics of the joint venture partnership. For instance, in the letter of intent, you might have details such as the kind of property you're going to try to find, the price point of that property, the timeline in which you believe you can find the property, the length of time you'd like to hold the property, and the profit split that you and your partner have agreed on. This is not a joint venture agreement. We'll get to that in a second. This is meant to set expectations for the partnership before drawing up a legal partnership agreement. Some people will even go as far as collecting a small refundable deposit at this point to make sure their partner is committed beyond just signing a piece of paper. But I'll leave that up to you. Step four, find a property. Now that you understand everyone's roles and responsibilities, profit split, and the type of property you're looking for, now you get to go out and shop for your ideal investment property. I get a lot of questions around which comes first, finding a good opportunity or finding a good partner. Here's my advice. When you're first starting out as a real estate investor, I would suggest finding your partner first and then finding the opportunity. You don't want to waste time and money finding properties that you have no ability to close on. As you gain experience, you can look at doing this the other way around. You can find opportunities and then search for your partner after the fact. It goes without saying, but the better the opportunity, the easier it will be to find a partner. Step five, get a joint venture agreement signed. Once you've found the property and you know who your partner is going to be, now you can draw up the joint venture agreement. This is the legal document that will govern the partnership. Do not 
skip this step, even if it's a family member. This legal document is an insurance policy for the transaction. If something was to happen to one of the partners involved or there was a dispute of any kind, you will need to refer back to the joint venture agreement for resolution. If you don't have one, this can get very costly with lawyers getting involved. Having a joint venture agreement drawn up will cost you about $1,000. This is the best $1,000 you will spend if you plan to partner with someone, regardless of your relationship with them. If you're looking for a template for a joint venture agreement or a lawyer that can draw one up, I provide these in my masterclass. You can enroll at darrenvoros.com. Step six, execute your plan. Once you've got the property in your control and everyone understands their roles and responsibilities, now it's time to make this a profitable scenario. Execute your business plan and begin to reap the benefits of the partnership. It's also a good idea to report back to your partner on a regular basis. Ideally, you should be reporting back on at least a quarterly basis with things such as the finances of the project and progress reports if you're taking on any renovations. The number one reason joint venture partnerships fail is not because the transactions don't make any money. That sometimes happens in real estate. The reason partnerships fail is because of a lack of communication. If you can communicate well, execute your plan, under promise and over deliver, your partners will be very happy and wanna to continue to work with you over and over again. As promised, I wanted to share a typical breakdown of what percentages you can expect in a joint venture partnership. A very standard joint venture partnership is when one party puts in time and the other party puts in money. The typical split I see here is 50-50 on all profits. Notice I said all profits. Once the money partner has been paid back, all of their initial investment is when these splits take effect. If you're new to real estate investing, I will challenge you not to get hung up on this 50-50 number. If you can get into real estate investing using someone else's money and learn along the way and only have 15% ownership, 15% of something is better than 100% of nothing. So until you build your reputation and your track record, you may need to adjust your expectations on profit sharing. At the same time, know your worth and don't give away your time for free, which I know is easier said than done. If you have questions about how to joint venture or any other real estate related questions, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.